Hello YouTube, it's Lewis here from FluidDesigns.com and I'm going to be showing you how to use the vanishing point in Photoshop CC. I think you can use um, up to CS4 uh, onwards and I think that has a vanishing point in, I'm not sure. It might be in every single one, you have to check if uh, whatever version you have. Um, let's get right into it. I'm going to be showing you basically the tips and tricks of it and how to use it uh, well and um, what it basically does. So first of all, we've got um, this image. I've cut out the sky. I've actually just missed something I just spotted. So I need to reveal back in that ledge. There you go. Um, like that. Okay, so what we have here is obviously, it's a nice image. But I've, I've basically, what it was is it was, um, one second. It was like that. But I increased the top. Uh, you might want to do that. I had to do that in my last piece, the life's path which um, I put the description if you want to go watch that uh, speed art video the time-lapse um, but basically I had to recreate this top section of this wall now what most people would do is probably just uh, try and copy and paste and move it up and see if that would line and it, it, it wouldn't really work because once you go like that obviously these are off here that wall's not much in there the windows are not matching um, but it's a much easier way of doing it well not I wouldn't say easier but a much more precise and professional way of doing that so what I've done is make a new layer here, just above it. So I'll do that again, so just a new layer at the bottom here. And then what we're going to go to is Filter Vanishing Point. Now what you do here is basically replicate the angles of the buildings using a box. So it's got this box grid set up for you. So you, you go, so if I say here, and if I go here, I might have to do it in two sections. And then let's get that line accurate so then obviously the top set point where we've got there we need to match where it would be in real life situation you could tell because then the line just starts to go jagged i would say that's in line with that door there okay so that's our box that's our grid now what we can do is stretch this so actually we don't need to we can do the whole all of it i one go now what let me show you what this is in here so the grid size um, that just uh, gets the grid, but we don't really need to know about that. Um, I don't believe it affects the, what we're going to be doing. Um, so we've got that there. So now these tools on the left, you've got a brush, you can brush things in. Um, you've got, you can hold it down, do things with that. What we're going to be using now is the stamp tool. So it's exactly the same as the clone stamp tool in Photoshop, but we're going to be using this grid to replicate the angles and it'll be perfect for us. Um, so let's zoom in on this. Okay, it's a bit, bit too close. So we're going to be replicating this bit here. So let's get the clone stamp tool. Now let's check our brush size. That should be okay. Let's try and get this this uh, main wall section here. Remember section here. So if we uh, make the brush bigger, you can actually get a lot of the wall done in a few goes. So if I go here. Like so, as you can see, it's replicating everything. It's perfect. It's a perfect tool to use. It's great. Um, I can replicate the whole wall here. So if I go like that, that, and it's perfect. And then just to reduce the brush to finish that section off. Again, just go up. Same thing. And I can. What I can do like that is if you Alt click where you you want to copy it, like you normally you normally do with the clone stamp tool. Um, and then click once where you want to fill it in, so there, and holding Alt, go to the top, and click, and it will make a straight line, so you don't have to just go up with the brush, you can just do it using that, and it will uh, cover everything for you. Now, it's not going to be perfect, because you're going to have like overlapping bricks, but you can get it perfect if you, uh, if you really try and get the selections correctly, like that, okay, so then I'll do this one, so... Uh, I've got that brick there, so we want to copy that brick. So obviously we've done that wrong, so uh, let's go back. Okay, and then let's get that selection going on there. Obviously we've got that window coming through on there, we can change that. Okay, so that's uh, that bit there done. Okay, 
I take a bit of getting used to, but it's just uh, a lot of practice. Um, it's just a clone stamp. It's pretty easy to use. Um, so with this bit here, we might have to do this separately because it's a bit easier just to copy and paste that bit. But let's try it anyway. So let's get a good selection of that whole section. Let's get one of the piers. And let's try and do that. So it does work. And it worked mostly. Um, a little bit at the top here. But we can do that um, separately. Um, so that underneath looks good as well. So I can just go straight across, like so. Make sure I uh, do the right selections. After the white bit here, to okay, we'll do that. Just put that in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm when I'm uh, doing this, I'm changing the size of the brush, so I'm doing that by using the uh, the brackets key on my keyboard. Um, so obviously, on the left, the left key is reduce size, and the right key is to increase. So again, let's get a bigger brush than that. Oh, on the section you want to copy. I'm just going to keep doing that trick. Okay. That looks pretty good. Obviously, we've got a few errors here and there, but we can fix that with normal clone stamping um, in Photoshop. is a bit easier. Okay. Now, it's a bit tedious. It does take a little while, especially to get used to, but it's it has its benefits because you're not going to get the same angle if you um if you just copy and paste it. It's not going to work, and sometimes you do have to do this. Um, so yeah, that would you know I'd continue doing this. Uh, it would take me a little while, uh, but you get the general idea of how this works. So if you look zoom away, it looks it looks perfect. So if you see what we've done there. You actually created that whole thing, and it looks identical to what it does below. Obviously, I'd have to get rid of the blue bits at the top there, but that's fine. Just use a normal clean stamp, and then I would just get rid of it using the full PC. Obviously, that wouldn't take you long at all. Just need to refine it a little bit. Obviously, I'll take a lot more time on it than I am now, but it's uh, just for the sake of the tutorial. You might even be able to just use a brush on the on these bits here. Sometimes a brush is exactly the same. As you can see, you can't tell if that's a brush or a texture. It's exactly the same. So I could just go like that, and you wouldn't know any different. There you go. All right, so that's really good. Okay, so now uh, we've done that, I'm going to show you how to do the window. Um, so let's get back into that vanishing point. Um, but it's a bit trickier. Um, it might need a bit of refinement, but let's just try a big brush. So let's copy that one. And as you can see, I've got a big brush here. So if, as you can see, it's so good, this tool, because if you go far away, it gets smaller. The perspective is fantastic. So if I put this up here, I can match that. So it's not bad. Obviously, you have to do a bit of refinements, change the. Obviously, there's a bit more white you need to put there, refine the brick. But it's pretty good, and you can easily uh, fix that and make it look the same as the bottom one. And the perspective is good. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Um, so another technique I'm going to show you is using text to do this technique. So I'm going to first of all, um, let's just hide that layer. We don't use that layer anymore. Um, so uh, make a new layer. And I'm going to make some, some text, so road sign, or, or I don't know, wall sign, let's go with wall sign, wall, wall text, not that it matters. Okay, so wall text, I'm going to convert to smart object, um, actually don't need that, just rasterize the layer, control A, select all, control C, so I'm copying that. 
And then on a, on a new layer again, get a filter, vanishing point. I'm going to zoom into what well, this dust box we're going to make, make there. So let's delete that box. I don't even have to delete on here. I'll show you that. Basically, let's make a box around this part of the wall up here. So I'll use this even though. Well, I won't actually. I'll make a new one. Sorry. Change my mind. <laughs> okay. So draw a box again. That's where we're going to put the text. So then control V and then it will. It will import that text for you. So I've got wall text up there. Um, now I've been having a problem that is uh, the selection. It's been putting a big box around it, and I'm not sure why. Um, really, it should be just around the text, but it's just doing this for me. I'm not sure if I can fix this at all. No, but we'll still use it. Let's try and do it. So holding Control T, I'm going to resize this. So we got it really small first. So we can use it in the box. So we've got that in there. Let's zoom in. As you can see, because of the box, the text is matching the perspective of the wall. So you can just, uh, if you don't want to change the perspective, just hold shift, but I'm just going to do it with, by eye. Then we can bring that in there. If you want to make it bigger, so wall text. There you go. So as you can see, the line of the bricks are perfectly in line with the bottom of the text, same with the top. Click OK, and then we've got that text on a new layer. So uh, a little trick, um, I'll show you how to make it look like it's actually going inside to the into the wall, the wall texture. Uh, double click on it or right click blending options. Sorry about that. Uh, and then uh, on uh, this, go to blend underlying layer, and then hold Alt on your keyboard, and then drag the the black slider. As you can see on our text. It's uh, it's blending with the texture. Another thing you can do, um, so I'm not doing that. Hold Alt, remember hold Alt. Um, you can add an inner shadow. So let's get the same angle as the wall, not too much, just a little, a bit like that. So the shadow would be obviously that side. Just a little indent, not too much because it'd be too fake, and maybe a little bit of a bevel and emboss. Same again, not too much. That angle is completely wrong, so change that. Get a chisel hard, possibly. Even an outer bevel. You can really make uh, it stand out. Because some, some spaces have this type of uh, wall effect on there. Some shop signs and that. They'll have a backing, like a black text around it. Okay, so see what that looks like. So that looks pretty good. Might not be completely uh, realistic, but you get the idea um, of how it works. Okay, so that's uh, basically it for the tutorial. Um, I hope you liked, uh, I've said I have to finish this off, but um, you can do that. Um, so yeah, please like and comment on this video and um, any suggestions, please put them in the description, uh, in the comment section. Thank you very much, I've been Lewis, cheers, bye.